Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at a solution to problem A1 from the 2012 Putnam exam. So it says, let D1 through D12 be real numbers from the open interval one to 12, and we wanna show that there exist distinct indices, i, j, k, such that d, i, d, j, and d, k are side lengths of an acute triangle. So before we get going, uh, we wanna look at a little fact which characterizes the side lengths of acute triangles, and it follows from the law of cosines. So, Let's go ahead and review the law of cosines, which says that if you have a triangle like this, and you have side length A, B, C, and then the opposite angles are given by capital C here, capital B here, and capital A here, then you know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared minus 2AB cosine C. And you can write, rewrite this to have to do with any of the side lengths or angles that you want to put any angle there that you want to. Okay, so now let's assume that this side length C is the longest length, then that means this angle will be the biggest, which means that this is bigger than C squared if C is less than pi over 2. In other words, 90 degrees. So in other words, if we have an acute triangle, we know that the sum of the squares of the two shorter lengths is strictly greater than the square of the larger length. So we'll use that fact as we work through this problem. Okay, so I'll erase the board and then we'll do some exploration for this problem. Okay, so I've put our fact up here and that is that A less than or equal to B less than or equal to C are lengths of an acute triangle if and only if C squared is less than A squared plus B squared. So obviously if you get equals, then it's a right triangle Pythagorean theorem. And if you get greater than, then you have an obtuse triangle. But we are looking at acute triangles in this case. So let's explore towards a solution to this really quick. And what we want to do first is maybe expand this interval so that D1 and D12 are within the closed interval 1 to 12. Okay, so now we want to look at what, what it would take for there to be no side lengths here that produce acute triangles. So in other words, we want to look for what would it take for us to have a lot of triangles that are right triangles. So let's lay this out. So we could have uh, D1 less than or equal to D2. So we can just assume that we're in this ordering. And if we're not in this ordering, we can rename everything until we're in this ordering. So D3 all the way up to D11, D12. Good. And now let's say that D1 is equal to one, so we're putting this like right on the edge of our expanded interval. Notice that after we square this, we'll get D1 squared equals one, which is less than or equal to D2 squared, which is less than or equal to D3 squared, all the way up to D11 squared, which is less than or equal to D12 squared. And if we want there to be no acute triangles, but just on the edge of there being no acute triangles, then this could be one, and then we have some freedom to choose this to be one. But then the square of this should exactly equal the square of those two. So in other words, the square equals two. And now let's go ahead and look at D4. So the square of D4 should equal the sum of the square of these two because that'll give us a right triangle. So that'll be three and then so on and so forth. Notice these are generating Fibonacci numbers. Here's the first, second, third, fourth Fibonacci number. So this would be the 11th Fibonacci number and the 12th Fibonacci number. And you can check that the 12th Fibonacci number is 144, which would make D12 equal to 12. So in other words, if we expand to include these endpoints, we are just barely able to create a situation where there are no sides of acute triangles built into these numbers. And so, and these nice Fibonacci numbers show up. So this is gonna be the seed to our solution. 
where we notice that this growth has this uh, two-step recursion similar to the Fibonacci numbers, um, and maybe we could go towards a contradiction building up towards a number that's bigger than 12 if we start with a number that's bigger than 1, which is a necessity if we haven't expanded this interval. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then um, we'll build this exploration into a careful solution. Okay, so now we're ready for our careful solution built off of this exploration that we've just done. So we're first going to start off with an assumption on the ordering of these numbers. So we will assume that D1, which is now strictly bigger than 1 because we're working um, in our real setup instead of our expanded setup, which we use to aid for simplification. So this is less than or equal to D2, less than or equal to D3, all the way up to less than or equal to D11, which is less than or equal to D12, which is strictly less than 12. <clears throat> So we have that ordering, and we'll also assume, by way of contradiction, that uh, no three vertices are sides of a, an acute triangle. Great. So what that tells us, since no three vertices are sides of an acute triangle, that means no three consecutive numbers are sides of an acute triangle. Okay, so what that tells us is that dj plus 2 squared is bigger than or equal to dj plus 1 squared plus dj squared, and then this is for all j between 1 and 10. And let's see why that's true. Well, if we have equality here, then that means these form the sides of a right triangle. If we have strict greater than, then they form the sides of an obtuse triangle. But this is preventing them from forming the sides of an acute triangle. So now, uh, what we can see here is that, you know, working out a couple of examples, that d3 squared is bigger than or equal to d2 squared plus d1 squared. But then by our assumption, those are both strictly bigger than 1. So this is strictly bigger than 1 plus 1, which equals 2. Okay, good. And then d4 squared is bigger than or equal to d3 squared plus d2 squared. But now d3 squared is strictly bigger than 2, and d2 squared is strictly bigger than 1. So this is strictly bigger than 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then let's do one more. d5 squared is bigger than or equal to d4 squared plus d3 squared, which is strictly bigger than 3 plus 2, which we get from the last two steps. Notice here we have 4, d4, and 3, and here we have d3, d3, and 2. Good, so this is 3 plus 2, which equals 5. And now we can notice these are Fibonacci numbers. So this is the third Fibonacci number. This is the fourth Fibonacci number. And this is the fifth Fibonacci number. So now uh, we can make the following claim. That D uh, K squared is bigger than or equal to F K for all K um, between 1 and 12. Okay, good. And now I'm going to move this claim up to the top and then we'll prove it by induction. Okay, so on the last board we finished with the following claim. So we claimed that dk squared was bigger than fk for all k between 1 and 12. So we'll prove this by induction. So notice if we have k equals 1, well, we know immediately that d1 is strictly bigger than 1 by our assumption of being inside this interval, which tells us that d1 squared is bigger than 1, but that is equal to f1. So in other words, the first Fibonacci number. So now uh, let's make our induction hypothesis, and this is actually a strong induction hypothesis. So let's suppose... This is true 
for all uh, j between 1 and k, and then we'll consider the k plus first step. So notice we have dk plus 1 squared. So we know from an argument on the previous board that this has to be bigger than or equal to dk squared plus dk minus 1 squared. And we know that because these otherwise would form the sides of an acute triangle. But now this is uh, strictly bigger than fk plus fk minus 1 by the induction hypothesis. But now that's equal to fk plus 1. So we have dk plus 1 squared is strictly greater than fk plus 1. Okay, so in other words, we've proven this claim. So now we'll finish it off by using the claim with k equals 12. And that will give us d12 squared has to be strictly bigger than the 12th Fibonacci number. But then you can easily check that the 12th Fibonacci number is 144. But that tells us that d12 squared is bigger than 144, which tells us that d12 is bigger than 12. But that's a contradiction because d12 um, was assumed to be less than 12 up here. Okay, good. So that's the end of the solution.